everybody. Welcome to the Needle Bar. Um, I was going to say the date, and I just totally blanked. So uh, October 25th, 2022. And today we are going live in the Pulse software. Um, I'm joined by Justin Armenta from JA Digitizing Studios. We've got Matthew Enderly from Patch Phrase. DJ Anderson from Digitizing Masterclass. And I'm Jeff Fuller from Fuller Embroidery Works. And we're going to be talking in Pulse. But before we get too far into anything, uh, I'm going to disclaimer this right now. If you are on Facebook and attempting to comment and it is not going through, there is an issue uh, with StreamYard that is preventing you guys from commenting. So if you want to head over to the YouTube side of the things, you can comment on YouTube and you can say hello to people there. You should subscribe. You can like and subscribe too. I'm totally okay with that. Yeah, it won't it won't offend me at least. It might offend <laughs> Justin, but just a little like, subscribe, and hit that little bell notification. Oh, I forgot the bell. <laughs> oh yeah, that matters because others you won't get the notification. Like what is subscribing right. even for then? <laughs> <laughs> so we have Ramona joining us. Good evening. And she says hi to DJ. Hey. Hello. Uh, we have Letty Walker from Walker Woods Creation. Hello. And I imagine people will trickle over. Uh, we have Cindy King joining us. Hello, Cindy. And uh, there we go. Jesse is Jeff, Justin. Oh, hi, Jeff, Justin, Matthew, and DJ. I was like, hi, from <laughs> West Virginia. So, All right. Before we actually go on, okay. I don't know if you've noticed, but Jesse Gibson has commented on every single one of our lives. That's impressive. I think that's pretty amazing because I was scrolling through all the comments on our Facebook and you single-handedly commented on every single one saying hi, which is awesome. There's nice. like 200 of them. Yeah. Um, so congratulations. You have won yourself a thread kit from Filtech. <laughs> um, I don't know where it, oh, it's across. There the you road. go. But if you, as long as you're in the U.S. because we can't ship uh, Ocon. International. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Send us a message on the Embroidery Nerd Facebook page, uh, and Matthew can get up and go get that now, apparently. Actually, <laughs> that's not up oh, there. It is. It's under there the, it, is. it was under our uh, twill that we sell in our store. Here we go. Oh, that's the big spools, too. Yeah, the big ones. Nice. All right. Well, let's get into it. Because I am so far prepared that currently this is what I have open. This is the home screen of the start page. Of I know. Like, I'm, I'm feeling a little self-conscious because DJ has worked in this software more than I have. And I feel like he's going to throw popcorn at me the whole time. Um, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So I might struggle bust the image importing because, well, I'm importing an image. Um, and I don't remember where I saved it. Uh, so. so, so just as a, as a precursor, so everybody knows, um, Jeff, Matt, and I have uh, the opportunity to, to try all software and kind of expand our, our range of education. Cause I know when we get sp software specific, all of us use Wilcom and that's what we pretty much use on a daily basis and we're proficient in, but we're journeying into the, the pulse era and trying to get another you know, one of the bigger heavy hitters as far as software is under our belt and, and try to see if we can kind of do dual education in, in, in both. Uh, so, yes, we, we may look like novices right now, which we are to this platform, but uh, we're just going to kind of show you our journey into, into getting more Pulse information out there. I mean, we could call this the Needle Bar Learn Pulse With Us segment. And, let's uh, learn this together. Oh. Yeah, let's, yeah, we can call it that. Because I, well, there's a video I did of me doing Recoma. It was pricey. It, it was interesting. We'll put it that way. But this one should be better. Let, uh, let's let's we're do watching, that again. Yeah, Matt, pull it. up your screen. Uh, <laughs> mine, there's some error. It won't let me do it. It says not enough bandwidth or something. So. <laughs> uh -huh. well, I'm, I'm kind of excited because... Um, Pulse is one of the, the DG softwares, one of those that not a lot of people know, but it's amazing software. And I think it'll shock a lot of people as to what all it can do, like special features and stuff. It's 
their whole automation, which I'm on the road doing some consulting with a company that utilizes it. And it's unbelievable. I mean, it literally, um, I was blown away by that technology of being able to order something. The order comes into the company, they scan it with the barcode, it loads right onto the machine and they just have to press start after hooping it. It's been oh, a while. Wow. Yeah, I was pretty blown away just with our interview and demonstration of that online. It's like, I need yep. it. I need it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to pull this up again. And I'm going to go. The first thing I'm going to do, because I've done a little bit more in this than Matt and Justin. And so they're going to look at me like I'm some sort of expert. Um, some sort of is what I was thinking. <laughs> Definitely. So I'm going to go into the user settings. You're, and an, ex you're an expert in StreamYard. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. So one of the things I found really interesting is you can actually set your cost per thousand stitches in here. Um, I did math. Mathematical. And I came up with my shop rate is two dollars per thousand stitches, and that's based what? off. What? Of, You're expensive. No, I'm just I kidding. know I am, but You're worth it. I'm worth it. That's right. Um, so I went ahead and put that in there, and we're just going to kind of go through here. Um, I like to show crosshair cursors, um, you know, different interfaces, so we can not use. Oh, yeah, we're not going to do that. Dang it! So I'm general Jeff. What is quick draw? What is quick draw? So that's kind of the um, the node style that you can put in. So you can either do like free freehand, you can do curve node, bezier co curves, arcs. So quick draw is more what we're used to. Okay. Um, in in digitizing will come. So we'll go into an environment. There was one that I checked that saved my life. <laughs> um, and I just have to look here. Nope. Display, again, nothing crazy, shortcuts, digitizing tool behavior, open stitch files. Let's go to stitch generation because that's really what I did. So I went to and I um, checked to generate stitches uh, after node edit. So one of the things that drove me nuts, absolutely nuts when I started digitizing in this is every time I would move a node, nothing would happen to the stitches on this on the screen. And you get so used to, in some software, primarily Wilcom, whenever you make a change, it immediately generates, regenerates the stitches and you see that feedback. And for this to not do that, I thought that I was doing something wrong. Like maybe I wasn't editing it properly. Um, it's not your it's, fault, Jeff. Yeah, it's not, it, it's not my fault. Um, not this. And it, <laughs> and it turned out that I just needed to regenerate the stitches. So um it doesn't catch everything but when i notice that i move something and it doesn't regenerate the stitches or i change my start stop point and nothing happens i hit the g key on the keyboard because the g key uh is the keyboard shortcut for generate stitches um that's just a heads up uh there was another one that i added and um dj you might be able to point me to it a lot faster than i can get there um but it was to add the tool guide down here on the bottom, right? So that when I get into a tool, I can actually see like the steps to use this tool. Um, it pulls that up and kind of tells me what I need to do next, which has been really helpful uh, with learning the software. Because if I ever get stuck, I can look over there and go, oh, that's what I have to do next. Um, so we'll just kind up already and I never changed anything. Well, you're awesome. I know. <laughs> I'm not an expert, but. So we'll kind of go over the tools we have here. We have our digitizing tools. So these are, you know, our SAT column, manual stitches, column, run. Um, and if you notice, they're all kind of color coded. So we have our art tools over here that are purple. Um, we have our edit tools and we have our background tools. So I'm going to go and we're going to grab the art that was sent to me very shortly before we went live and i put it in you mean head. while we went live Shh. uh so while you're doing that um i'm gonna bring up a comment here so we got one from tmg hi 
Um, he said that he finally jumped on the Wilcom boat and he's wondering what Pulse is. So, yeah, <laughs> we've been doing our lives in Wilcom for the past, I don't know, what, two, two and a half years straight. And, uh, yeah, we, we mentioned earlier that we pretty much were uh, given the opportunity to use Pulse to kind of educate the community. We've had a couple people come and ask, yeah, I have Pulse. There's no education online. Um, can you guys help us? And it's like, well, we can't really if we don't have the software. So work some things out and we're demoing it for you guys here. So uh, we're not saying you have to use it. It's just- No, both both programs are very powerful programs. Welcome is great. Um, we just knew that we, as far as furthering our education for, for everybody, uh, we kind of were other than Jeff and his 20 different softwares um we we were really focusing on wilcom based stuff just because that's what we use and we're proficient in um but we're just we're just trying to add pulse to the to the lineup and, and get education out there for for those pulse users out there yeah you want know, to see me go fast let me move over <laughs> i've got all the keyboard shortcuts on my programmable pad so we're gonna work on this um struggle bus it now so i brought in the art and if we go into the sequence window you can see we have no objects and i can't actually select the art um and so in order to do that i need to go over to image and backdrop select and now i can select and and move the art around um and i can go in here and i can go to the reference tool and this will allow me to set uh the proportions and i think matt you said this needs to be six inches wide yeah four tall six wide so are you digitizing a design for him <laughs> hey, you guys mm -hmm. never noticed that i just give them designs and they do it for me every wow. every time we digitize live matt is like i got one for you i know i'm like this is a patch isn't it <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh, it could be anything <laughs> it's probably a patch um so i, I went in there and I right clicked and I went to my reference tool and I was able to uh, specify what size I wanted it. Um, six inches, hey. 152 millimeters. Right click again on that image. Okay. I just wanted to see what you had there. You know, we can Property. go ahead and make this uh, full screen because people probably don't really care about our faces right now. Probably. All right. So we'll go ahead and now everything's locked. Um, Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and I'm going to look at the um, the distance there. So I'm going to use, yep, not that keyboard shortcut. There we go. Control M is going to give me my ruler and so I can go ahead and measure. And what I'm measuring here is you can see that's 0.93 millimeters wide. Um, this one is roughly the same 0 0.8 0 0.5 so i'm wanted to measure my columns here and i'm looking at um the, the thinnest points here uh, i'm not really that concerned up here um they're roughly five six millimeters so i will come and leave those as open in satins um as i come up and there you go so Roughly going to start in the middle here, and we'll go ahead and start. I'll do the word ultra to the right and uh, plus to the left. Generally, when I digitize, and I think this is just becoming a uh, habit, um, I tend to move center out, and it doesn't really matter what I'm doing. I kind of go from center out, especially when it goes into text. So this is going to be kind of the classic satin tool. Um, we'll come in. And we'll just kind of throw down some of our nodes as we go around. Is it left click uh, line, right click curve? Uh, yeah, it is. I feel like you should have edited the background out so it's not black, so you can actually see it. Well, now that would have just been easy. So oh, you can see it. Yeah, now you can see it. So we went ahead and went through there and digitized that. Um, now I'm going to go into the edit tool. And one of the things that I really like about this is I can work and I can actually just grab a line 
and I can start to adjust the line nodes as it goes around. So even if I'm not exactly where I want to be when I start, I can move those around and get them to where I want them to be um, when I finish. And if I want to change a node, I can go in here and I can convert to gust, convert to smooth, symmetric, straight. Um, and that gives me the <clears throat> hey, icon. That I need. Yes. You know what I think is a good point on this too, is that the whole software is very different in that what you see and where you see the points is actually what you're going to get. So it's not going to reprocess it at the end like most do, even Wellcom. So like what you're going to see on the screen is exactly where the stitches are going to take place. Yep. And that's, let me go to. And that's internet. actually a neat thing too, because like I've noticed when I send designs from Wilcom to my machine, it's like, it'll be like 10,100 stitches or something. And then I look on the machine and it's like 10,070 stitches and it's because it got rid of a few. So I think it's nicer to actually know exactly what your machine is going to do. So one of the interesting things is, is when we come in here, you can actually look and you can see that this satin stitch is not um, exactly smooth tracing right along that line. And the reason is, is as DJ said, it, it actually plots the stitches where they're going to go. And we have the resolution of the pentagraph, which if I remember right, is uh, point, is it point oh one or point one millimeter? Um, I believe, I believe it's point one. Point one millimeter. So what it's doing here is, is taking into account the resolution of the pentagraph and it's adjusting the stitch points accordingly. So that really comes down to is when I move a stitch here, it's actually good. That's where the stitch is going to be. Um, and it's based off of the resolution of the pentagraph, which is, uh, I think it's really nice, especially when you start getting into like 3D puff and you're getting into really dense areas that you get needle breaks, you'll actually be able to see where the needles themselves are or the needle penetrations themselves are falling on your design and you'll be able to make the adjustments there. So we'll go ahead and show the design again and I will kick back on uh, the 3D preview um, because Justin can't live without it. <laughs> no, that's me. I love the 3D preview. I knew it. It was somebody. Um, so, Well, Jeff's plotting points right there. There was a couple questions as far as like where to get it and how much. Um, Pulse is a Tajima product. If correct me if I say something wrong here, DJ. No, um, actually, it's it's news now that um, Tajima um, purchased Pulse. Correct. Yeah. So it's, I guess it's a division of Tajima. Pulse is the software that they they kind of sell with their machines. Um, it's you know their preferred software for the machines. Um, so if you are purchasing a uh, purchasing a Tajima, that's the software that they're going to sell you as well. And you can you can go to directly to Pulse or to Gima to buy the software. Um, uh, as far usually as usually in the U.S., it's Hirsch. It's Hirsch. Okay, Hirsch International. Um, I deal with them a lot. They're they're a great company as far as the Tajimas that we run. Um, but as far as exact pricing and, and tiers and all that, that is some information that we should get in in uh, and have available to you guys when we do these Pulse lives because um, there uh, if there if there is different levels and different tiers is that correct yeah okay so yeah that's that is definitely some information we just don't want to give out the wrong information on that uh but yeah uh hirsch international uh they do sell tajimas and the software um but it is i guess it's a, a tajima product now now that they bought some pulse yeah we're all brand new to this so we don't really know what we're doing yet which is why we have the the steering wheel in Jeff's hands. No pressure. We're just. Putting I, can it honest, I can honestly say I I should be the one that knows it best because in our embroidery room we are running pulse, and that's for our operators to call up the design, send to the uh, to the machines, and then they do basic uh, lettering as far as names and titles and whatnot on it. I know it enough to do names in, in lettering and calling up designs, but I don't use them on a daily basis on digitizing. So 
I'm not too familiar on this side of it. And it is a, a, definitely an older version of, of the software. I mean, you could be like me and be like, yep, that looks about like what I'm going for. And <laughs> Jeff's just laughing behind me. And It yeah. was great. I loved it. Every hey, part of paying it. for it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, it was good. What you guys saw there um, is as I'm moving through each of these objects. So I've got this set and it's going to start there. It's going to end there. And I'm actually going in and I'm giving it start um, lock stitch. So I can set the lock stitch, the end lock stitch, and if I'm going to trim at the end of each command. Um, that's uh, important. Um, it will do some of that when it filters it through right before it processes it uh, to go on the machine. But I would rather ma manually specify it and just take that out while I'm going along so I could um, I can make those choices as I go. Um, I don't really have it. Yeah, I really want to like nerd out on features right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. It's make fun of Jeff hour. It's oh, so <laughs> I've been using the column column tool. I had to look at what they're calling it, which is similar to the column A tool in Wilcom. And then this tool, they've got their satin path, which is actually similar to a column B tool. Um, and the difference here is actually, you can see that it's putting, uh, these are curves. I'm going to go ahead and come up here and I'll stop there. Now, instead of hitting enter and coming back the other side, I actually just come straight across and come back down. So it's kind of like tracing in graphic software. Right. If you're using like a Corel Draw, Adobe Illustrator, stuff like that. Yep. And so now, of course, I put my stitches in that direction, but I stopped. It's wanting me to actually put in my stitch angles next. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. And I want to make sure that they're running the same direction. And then I have to hit the G key because, well, you saw what happened when I didn't. And so you're... now I'm ready to go ahead and continue digitizing. So I'm, I'm curious how, how the software knows to switch to the other side nodes. The other side nodes? Uh, I it think will it when you use that tool, you, you finish that side, go back to your, your starting point, end of it, and work your way back over to where you ended before. So... Huh. You do one side and come back to the bottom. Like if you start with the bottom left, you plot mm -hmm. one side, click enter. You start with the bottom right and go up to where you you ended. Oh, this it actually you stop and you kind of and he went across, just plotted another point and came down. And yet the software knows that that's where the end of the satin should be. But I guess that's where you're you're plotting your your directions. And to me, it looked like you were doing like a closed shape fill. And then you just define your stitch angles after right. the fact. Right. That's what I did. So when I got to the bottom, I actually closed the shape. I don't have to close the shape. I can come in here and I can just do the satin path and, you know, come around. And it is nice to kind of see those curves as they form. Um, get there. And again, come back. I'm going to make this a little bit wider. Um, one of the things that I really like about using the left side, right side is you can actually see your width as you're digitizing, um, where if you come in here, you don't. So this time I didn't. Did you hit enter that time? I did. I hit enter instead of hitting O. And so now it put, it put the stitches around, and you can see that it got the start point and the start stop point correct. And so now I just need to come through and add my um, stitch angles. We'll come there. And I'll hit the G key to regenerate the stitches. And so now I have that there. The other time that it's good to use this is if, if especially if you're like kind of learning and you struggle going around curves with the point counterpoint method, it's a lot easier because then you get to define them at the end and you get it all nice and clean. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what DJ is saying is definitely a, Kind of a hard thing to learn especially if you don't know art programs your background's not any type of art program or design um, but the point counterpoint because it's relying on the 
on how close the nodes are and how tight the curve is. There's sometimes where if you if you point them, if you plot points too far apart from each other, that curve may not follow the actual, you know, arc of the artwork. So you have to plot more points or less points. And it's just something that as digitizers we do repetition, repetition, repetition. We start we start learning that curve, kind of like just driving your car around a curve, you know, how much to turn the, steer, the steering wheel to, to make a sharp turn or a, or a slight turn. Um, but yeah, using that tool, you kind of just go around one side and you're just worried about one edge. You come around and do the second side and then you don't have to worry about those kind of weird points that you have to, you know, decide on yourself as far as what you're plotting. Um, we got a couple comments and I don't know, did we talk about Ramona's here about placing nodes? Left click is regular straight, right click is curved. Yes. Correct. Right. And it's adjustable. Well, I was going to say, I saw a setting that, that allowed you to right click to end a segment. So if mm -hmm. you turn that setting on, then what is a curve then? Control. 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 Okay. And that, yeah, that's the typical one in a lot of other softwares. So I think, I think in Brilliance is that way. I believe. I know, I know I Wings Chroma is. is. Wings is as well. So yeah. it's kind of a, does it that way where control is the curve, the toggle between line and curve, and right click generates. Okay. And then we got a comment from Cindy saying, "So why would someone want Pulse? So, in my opinion, this is." one of the like must haves if you're doing like huge amount of orders and you want to automate things or like you're running a um what was it, like a custom design shop or whatever where you have a website with a bunch of designs and it'll they can edit it put their name on it and it generates um the pxf file right uh -huh. and then it, like your emb file and will come so it would basically generate you your native file with their name already embroidered into it and then you can put it in through pulse and then you can manipulate it if you had to or run it on the machine so that's kind of that that's just the part that i'm excited for uh or at least seeing it um yeah like um dj has the rest so basically it'll do i mean it's it's a software for anybody that digitizes anyone can use it but what they specialize in is that automation. They specialize in personalization. So if you're doing a lot of personalization or you are a big company that offers that, um, like, what is it, 33? There's a, there's a pretty big company out there that does a lot of personalization. But um, that it automates everything, you know? So it um what people see on when they're going to go place an order is what they actually get right so um if they type their name in or a monogram or whatever and they preview it on a product that's the exact file that gets stitched out and it's all done online going directly to the actual machine to pull it up and run it so what what is the the platform online that a user would use that links pulse to it it's uh called pulse id so that is that is that something additional that a pulse user would have to subscribe to yeah it is and um it's that's what i've been like kind of playing around with a lot lately and it's like really blown my mind of um like what it can do i mean one of the things is is like if you think about the software and all it can do it's like available on the web right so it's processing everything online and shooting that design over wow. so it's got the entire engine and everything built into it it's pretty phenomenal it, so it's then kind of the software itself you can create all these templates Right. So you can define the height, width or like um, of text or an object, all of that, create a template and that template gets loaded online so that when people update information, it just updates it with actual stitch files and generates this all the stitching and stuff. It's pretty amazing, actually. So but they're they're um, they're an automation company, like a software company. They do 
everything you can think of cars think of cars that um have embossing in the leather they create the software that does all that like they're a huge they don't just do embroidery and all of that's built into this software so it's like the most advanced software that i've ever seen for doing you know personalization and does way more than just embroidery i mean it's kind of like wilcom's workspace except wilcom's workspace is limited to just creating a um like the auto digitized preview but mm -hmm. the pulse id is generating the no kidding um file yeah, from, from the template that you've made so your customer instead of just getting an auto digitized thing because you don't want to you know spend the time putting all their name on it for a quote or a preview it's literally the thing they click order and it's in your work uh folder or whatever to run for your production team or whatever so it's definitely way yeah. more advanced it's pretty amazing because those templates that you create you put all the settings in that you want yeah. every property every anything and when somebody types in a different name or anything like that it applies those exact settings so you can define it to a product and you know so if you're going to use certain densities because it's a certain product or certain underlays or anything like that it automatically generates it that way based on the template it's pretty amazing wow. that's pretty cool Sorry, I've been playing in this a lot. So like the online stuff, and it's just like really been amazing to me. So Jeff is in the zone. Yeah, we're we're helping you. We're talking so that people don't realize how much you're fumbling it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do appreciate that, you know. Uh, you're doing great, Jeff. That's what, but like, I really want to nerd out on some things that I've like really learned lately. And I'm like, it, I'm dying to like interject some really cool features that you won't find in any other program. <laughs> like with lettering. So is oh, there a, um, we'll do a lettering show. We got it. Is there a, uh, input column C version in, in this yeah. software? Yes, there is. Um, that would be this one, steel, right there. Okay. And we're going to reflect. That took me forever to figure out, too. Not going to lie. It was kind of sad. Matt got it very quickly. I did not. Then that uh, is, what, what did I get? That's pretty reflect. sad. Oh, yeah. I, that was like immediate. It was like, I am not using this if it does not have that. And Jeff's like, it doesn't have it. You're going to have fun finding it. And it was like literally the first thing I clicked. Like, I know. Oh. I felt he made me feel really bad about myself. We're not going to talk about it. There we go. Flip it across yeah. there. That went way too far. That's okay. I'll just delete that line and bring it back. It was pretty comical. It was the one time I beat him on something. The one time? Yeah. Apparently, you're not keeping track of all the other times because there's a lot more than one. Hey, I'm being modest here. I know. <laughs> I mean, not everyone could beat you in the puff off. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I didn't submit. Justin at least won. If I remember right, no Justin comment. didn't. Oh, I don't. I was going to say, Matt, if you won, I was like, what did you pay Justin to do the design <laughs> for you? Uh, no, so DJ, that's where you're wrong. I just submitted it as a digitizing 911 and made it <laughs> I didn't have yeah. to pay him. Just kidding. That didn't happen either. I'd say who rightfully won, but Google would probably ban me from the internet like that one live. Where it's talking about backing up your data and then Google killed Chrome on me. So I won't I won't disclose that. It's it's just that he doesn't want Justin to feel bad that it was me. No, Justin knows it was him. Hey, that's what he tells himself. At night. All right, everyone, let's let's revote on this. Give this video a like 
if uh, Justin won. Man, how many revotes are we gonna have? This is like and an then, there's so many recounts. Give a heart if it was Jeff, and then give a. Well, I guess on YouTube there's only like so. Huh, that's weird. Huh, that. Yes, we know who's gonna win that one. <laughs> It's called Creative Liberties. I believe we've heard that one before. Huh. It's not Creative Liberties. It's, it's Creative Cheating. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Well, if you're new and you don't have a clue what we're talking about, there is a competition that we did when uh, we we're showing off uh, Justin's three puff webinars. And uh, to do a little bit of promoting, uh, Jeff, and Jeff totally won. did a, a, a design puff off challenge where they would embroider a hat and a design and then vote on who won. Um, it was very clear who won. Uh, it was whoever had more wildlife in their designs. Um, <laughs> recognizable. The one who had their design featured in magazines. Thank you. The, uh... one, the one who had their design stolen and claimed by other digitizers. Thank you. Uh, but you know what? 2023. Yep. We have a That's play. what he tells himself. 2022 was a little uh, hiatus from uh, the great 2023 pop is we had a plan to have a pretty cool idea for the puff off. And we're going to see for sure. We're going to have proper judging. And by proper judging means I'm going to pick the judges. Yeah. Or maybe when we're at a trade show next year and we have a, a table or something and people can vote. Uh, as long as people don't steal a hat, we'd have to chain it down. Yeah, exactly. I can actually that. see that being a problem. Because your hat, Justin, was also sewn out by Texmac at ISS or whatever, and someone took it because they thought it was cool. So that's also a vote. No, a different design, though. Yeah, it was a different one, but it was still Puff. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He kind of idolizes you, Justin. <laughs> Matt or Matt? Well, I'm just waiting I, for Adam to chime in and say, eh, "I think actually we won." <laughs> I think I think Matt just likes stirring the pot. That's a, his I main mean, goal is. Yeah. I am a troll, so there's that. Technically, too. Adam is busy with homework. It's uh, like school or something. You mean? All of a sudden, started again. Business. Homework, homework. There you go, Matt. Cool. Now there's a second one, I do believe, <laughs> where it looks like a triangle. It's three triangles. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Hey, can we play around a little bit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Play. We don't have to do the other design. I mean, it's literally. Tell me what you want me to do. Thing. Welcome to Let's Digitize for Matt Hour. <laughs> for free. <laughs> for free. Oh, oh you, good for me. You, good for you. Want to play around? You want to like see some crazy stuff? Like, uh, there's a couple things I'm going to recommend that I don't know if that's how you do it, but we'll figure it out. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Okay, you got? letter. Select the letter T, like both letters and the letter T. Come on, Jeff. The internet's watching. Hold on. Oh, sheesh. You're failing here. Here, let's zoom in so that everyone can see. Let's okay. not zoom in so that no one can see. Okay, so right click. Is there a combine? Transform, yeah. shape, combine. Right there. Hey, combine. Ah, cool. Uh, yep. go to properties. You said properties. I'm there. No, go to like the program preferences, like the double click on it yeah there we go okay okay so let's go to quality control on the left okay yes all right um if you go to like fill gap you notice how justin and i got very quiet yes yeah <laughs> we're learning. Found somebody that knows what they're talking about. They got quiet. Can you select add fixed gap? Add fixed gap? No, I cannot. 
shoot. Okay, let's That's see here. Probably Did he not overlap it enough. I don't know. Well, it would have been really cool. Smile. Well, don't let's do it this way. Grab a text. Grab a font. All right. Let's let's just we're gonna not digitize for Matt anymore. Matt, wait. <laughs> couldn't we just have Jeff make that an alphabet font, and then we can do what you're trying to show? Oh, Matt. we don't have time for that. <laughs> I'm going to flat out say that. We don't have time for that. Um, Text tool. Matt is awesome. Or, or your file name that you sent me the other day. I don't think that that's... Uh, yeah, we have to rate this not PG then. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so double click, go to back into that quality control, go to fill gap. It doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, if we're um, going by, it doesn't like me. You don't have the super duper special edition. Oh, yeah, yes. ultimate special edition. Okay. Wait, what version? Am I? Oh, wait, you know what? Yeah, I might know what the problem is. We're not going to talk about that, though. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm laughing because I know what you're talking about. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Uh, Justin and I are over here like, we don't have a clue what he's talking about. No. Yeah. I mean, no, I don't. So there you there go. There you go. I fixed it. Go. Okay, so repeats do two. They apply. Okay, go to the like. Let's see a little bit of a slow redraw going on. Other icon next to it. The speedo other icon black icon looking thing. Left of the three D. Left of the speedo meter. The speedometer. Not that one. That one. There we go. Okay. Way too fast. Oh, Slow right. it down. Go back. Okay, so you know how I did the middle of the E? Let's go back a little bit. Oh. Yep. Okay. So um here what we go. We're look we'll at go right it. to there and we'll zoom in on it. Yeah, right so it'll keep going and wait till it comes back and gets to the edge. Okay, so keep going. And when it starts coming down and when it gets past, like right right about there now let's go like one stitch at a time try hit uh oh, i wonder if it's m on the keyboard no sorry it'll actually show you arrows as it's going through definitely not m on the keyboard yeah. i tried it not m yep right okay. uh, you were right about there. I know I hit the G key to regenerate the stitches because, you know. Okay. Uh, there it went. Go back one. I saw that. Okay. So, you know how when wide satin stitches go over the top of you, when they're going opposite directions and it will grab and pull um, the other stitches and create like a. Where yeah. you the fabric through uh -huh. so this fill gap watch what it does because we did two repeats if you hit forward one more so once it got past it it went up and then it's going to come back down and then we'll go up and back down and it fills in that gap whoa that's pretty nifty and that's like just a feature working with the fonts and stuff that is pretty nifty Granted, you could do that manually, but why would you do it manually when exactly you do it automatically? Were you? I mean, I always did it manually, and yeah, that was always fun. So there's another one too in the properties. That's oh wait, right? Uh, was that right there? No. Yeah, the M, that M really shows it really well. Is it? So they have a feature that area. Have, they have this too, where feature will automatically do that and go into the other column a little bit. 
And these are features you don't see in other programs. They're pretty amazing for doing lettering. And so is that because the font was built specifically with that? No, actually, there's actually a feature that you can access that will do that for you. So it doesn't have to be built into the font. It'll automatically do that. It's pretty so, cool. Cindy and Ramona were saying, well, what does it look like on the garment? So if you perfect perpendicular intersections, the horizontal bar of that E it sews and it's going to sew, you know, solid. When it comes down and starts sewing perpendicular to that, it's going to grab that last one or two uh, stitches on that E and it's going to pull it away. I kind of defend that using certain underlay techniques having a little bridge under there. Um, but this actually saves time as far as me trying to have to manually pot bridges and whatnot. So as it sews and comes to the to the bottom of that that horizontal bar, those stitches that it, it that it created that gap, it's just kind of going over. We had it set to two. So it jumps back over that gap, comes back on. So it's basically it knows it's gonna pull away those those last few stitches. It's just adding those back in. So I guarantee you, if you had an E that was without that function and, and the E with this function, you wouldn't, to the naked eye, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Right. I mean, just to go off of that, if I was to manually digitize this, and let me get into the proper tool here, but if I was to manually digitize this, I would come up like here and, you know, you're going to get that gap there. And so... Sometimes you'll see people, they'll do like a light under or light zigzag underlay under there. And then they'll come over and they'll start the satin to come back. Right. And that's just to fill in that area so that when that pull happens, you're going to see it. Um, I've also seen the technique where you come in with a satin and you go across and you actually double the satin back on itself to also um, to double up those threads. And so um now please go back so, you know, <laughs> uh, like a really good point of like saying the difference like their automation right they're not they're doing this online so they have to build in these tools that will do it automatically for you but these are really handy tools that save a digitizer a lot of time too mm -hmm. you know because then you don't have to manually do all that and right. just seeing that, seeing that alone, there's there's a lot of um, automatic tools in Wacom that there's a few that I use, but there's a lot of them that give you a little le little less control. I think, in my opinion, as a digitizer, that I just know the way I've done it, you know, through trial and error over the years, what works, and I'd rather have that that kind of a little bit more confidence that tried and true. I've used this technique. I'm going to keep on using it, even though Wilcom maybe have something similar to what I'm doing, but something like this, I mean, that's just the same as if you were to manually come do the top part of the E drop, stop your satin there, do plot a point and come back down. It's, it's almost like it's, it's a little bit more human thinking in, in the it's like what, Yeah. If you did that technique, that's exactly how you would do it. Right. Like, so yeah, because a lot, a lot, a lot of times, the, not just Wilcom, a lot of these softwares, like you know, pathing tools and stuff like that, where you can group elements, so you don't have to worry about individually changing start and stop points. You can group a bunch of elements together. Say path these. I want to start here and end here. Yet you look at the slow redraw, and it may do several runs of underlay because the computer's brain is saying. Oh, the best way to do this is to run over here, do this little segment, come back down here, do this, do this, do that. And they're, it's either breaking satins into parts or just adding a lot more underlay that you don't need if you were manually plotting it and manually, you know, pathing it yourself as you're, as you're digitizing. Yeah. And I don't know if the other program, like I, I'm, I'm the only non Wilcom user here, <laughs> but um, we'll fix that. I, I don't think you can. There's the, I have issues. <laughs> well, we all do. Um, but hi, DJ. With the <laughs> with the text, you can tell it if you want the underlay to go throughout the entire 
E and M or just each section? Like one. I did, I did notice that on the software at work. You can. So is that it. something that you can do in Wilcom? I'm not sure. No, uh, I don't. If you break it apart, then you can do it by segment. Okay. Right. But you yeah. then you can't edit the text anymore as text. Yeah. It's now a shape. Yeah. So, so you can choose that as an option with pulse lettering. Their lettering is actually amazing. Their lettering is pretty phenomenal. I, I love their stock stuff. I mean, we use it a lot for, you know, there's a lot to choose from and, and we use it a lot for names and titles at, in, the, in the office. And before Ramona kills me, I'm going to pull up her other question here. I don't think that's it. I, I thought it was the, uh, can you change the, uh, the right click in Floriani? I don't think we talked about that one. Change the right now. Uh -uh. Not yet. I won't dun, say dun, that dun. Won't happen. Just for Ramona. <laughs> DJ may pull. Maybe this one? one? No, it was no. two questions above. So it is that one. Is that setting available in Floriani? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally not om onima. No, I can't say it. Um, uh, well, now I can't say it. <laughs> omnia, <laughs> can't say it. Ominous. Yeah, menacing. That's totally not menacing. I'm just gonna go with that. Stick with the so, safe words. I'm gonna grab a comment here, and it, and it's Cindy, and she's saying, "Okay, I'm. I guess I'm thinking it would look better under instead of on top." And honestly, with how those two letters are gonna come together, you're not gonna notice which one. You won't. Top. It'll look totally natural and normal. Right. Yeah. Because it goes all the way to the bottom, and then it comes back up and down, so it's going in that exact place of where. The first column kind of went on the horizontal. So yeah, you're basically just replacing the stitch that got pulled underneath yep. the, the vertical. Yep. Yeah. And that's not, I mean, I can throw something. You want to play more with Matt's design? Like, I have a, I have a thought. We just need to send no, it. Th this is so bad because I'm, like, asking you to do features that um, I haven't even played with yet. Oh, <laughs> that would be great. We're, we're in the let's learn this together. Fire away. We'll break it. The, copy that logo part, not the lettering. Just like take all that, copy, paste it, bring it over to the side. Get it out of that black background there. Dang it. Oh, you and he failed. Um, I think Cindy also asked, "What are the crosses or the pluses when you were looking at shapes?" I don't think we got that one triangles and circles so there are there are pluses actually um let me go into i want to say it's not there uh my brain's not working I it is your down. stitch angles is what you're seeing there when we're doing the crosses and the pluses so if i just drop this here and we go there like that and i draw across so they put little plus and minus and that's actually that's your stitch angle as it's coming across cool i just want no question left unanswered <laughs> oh great <laughs> we're in trouble now all right dj i got you. questions okay so like take it off 3d view like i'm very curious of what's going to happen here take it off 3d view okay zoom into it okay so let's first select it and then double click to get into the properties And let's go to see on quality control auto clip stitches. Clip stitches oh, overlap nice. by above. Yes. Uh, okay. Overlap distance. Yeah, control. like so, like an overlap distance is pretty cool, though, right? Like do like a point two or three, you know, millimeters. Let's see. Oh, was only one thing selected? Probably. Oh, okay, so we might have to... Okay, let's try that again. Well, oh, you have other things selected to the left. Matt, stop selecting everything. There. Sorry. It's all your fault, Matt. Yeah, my bad. Just one piece. Oh, it's still selected. Okay, so double-click below it. What if I combine it? Well, no, let's, let's try this first, though. Like... 
It's like select it and double make don't double click on a segment. Go a little bit to the right below. Yeah. All right. Quality. No. Yeah, it was quality control. Yep. Auto clip. Auto Stitch. clip stitches. Turn it on. Clip stitches overlap, and we're gonna go with point three. Bye. Okay. And I'm gonna smack the G key just to make sure that they're generated. And no. Okay, so double click on it below it again and let's try checking the other box for the quality control but um auto clip auto clip stitches, stitches this one let's see that says click overlap stitches okay in segments below oh, okay 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 um, so, like that it uh, yeah it did you can see okay. right there it stopped yes okay yeah jumps so, across what what yeah i just fixed your design you owe me Oh no way! That's and like that's you can control how much it overlaps into the other one too. So you can just plot a bunch of shapes on top of each other and then just say remove the, Flip that's the ones out. Cool. That's cool. like the branching tool is the lazy way of doing pathing. That's like the lazy. I don't way even of have words. Segments. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's an optimize entry and exit too. There's also an optimize Matt's time digitizing, which is using uh, <laughs> these lives. The needle bar live. I hope you don't mind me like us trying these things out. I just I've I've been yeah. nerding out on this stuff. Like this has been so cool. Um, I can honestly tell you, I have not used optimize entry and exit points yet. I'm looking at the screen, going, "Where is that?" Um, is that just the closest start and stop thing? Let's see here. It's going to be up in your probably segment. I'm, I'm imagining that's like the closest join or something. Yeah, like so what you have right there is like set design start. That's uh, set design start. Okay, so let's go uh -huh. to gener maybe generation no. processing. Let's see here. We're just going to go through them all. Tools, not tools. Manage. Wait, nope. wait okay. Was it manage? I don't think so. That's oh, no. a, that kind of stuff. Design properties. Design properties. No, that's going to be the height and the width and those things. Of course, it would probably be a common setting right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's one button and it's somewhere. Yeah, close. yeah. And I'm sorry because like I know it's there. Um, I do too. That's the part that's getting me is I know it's here somewhere now. Where is it? What about those pull down menus next to start and stop up there? Here? These yeah. are your start and stop commands. Yeah. So if you're throwing in, you know, trim, stop, oh, slow, okay. path. All right. And then these are your lock stitches that you can add here. If you um, right click on it on the like on the design, I don't think it I don't know if it'll be in there, but Auto start and stop. Yeah, of course. Makes total sense. Yeah, there you go. When all Optimize of the, your entry and exit points. Let's right click again. Let's see what other options are there for that. Right. Uh, Not on a note. Got it. Uh, <laughs> auto start and stop. We got boundaries. So if we want to throw a border okay, around so it. So here's the other one is a sequence, right? So uh -huh. what the sequence will do is it'll move the positions around to better optimize it. Right. So if you have one thing stitching in one part and then you move over and then you come back and, you know, you do jumping around, it'll resequence those objects. But it's a smart um, kind of resequencer in that if something's overlapping, you know, like even like the color sorting and stuff, it's not going to then put something on top of another object, right? It, it makes sure that the layering is kept the same. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Ramona has a valid question that says, does Folsom Floriani share native files? Uh, no, but you can open Pulse files in Floriani. There you go. Not Nobody backwards, knows. though? Not right now dun 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 not so yet. you can open pulse in floriani but not yeah floriani <laughs> that's 
Answer me this, DJ. Because uh-huh. I read somewhere, but I tried it, it didn't work. Did Pulse used to open EMB files? Yeah. It okay. depends on the version. So, so it was it? It was an older. Yeah, and so it's a game that they play, right? They don't do it anymore. The reason is is because um, they literally had to crack the code every single time. Oh, right? okay. So, so what would happen is they would crack the code to make an outline file, and then all the other company would have to do is change one little thing into their into their like file type. And then all of a sudden you can't open it anymore. And they used to spend tons of money, both companies cracking each other's codes. And then they all just finally gave up because, you know, it's just too much money. Gotcha. It's a lot of time and money. Yeah. It goes into each one. I'm just randomly pushing buttons, breaking things. Oh, it started working for a second there. It was just frozen. I was like, this is going to be great. Um, yeah, so we can go in and we can add, change. So obviously we have barely, barely scratched the surface on what the software can do. But we uh, we have the software in our hot little hands now. And when Matt and I get a little bit better at it, um, we'll definitely have some more of these these pulse segments and and learn a little bit more on how powerful the software is. I'm coming um, for you, Jeff. Yeah, it, like create, you, like creating fonts, Jeff. Is it not um, pretty amazing? Creating fonts in this system. Fonts are intense in pulse. Like they're intense. <laughs> you have visual kerning, manual kerning, you've got kerning boxes, um, you can pull combine letters. What was that? It'll pull kerning out of a true type font. Yeah, so it'll pull that kerning out of that. A true type font, it will pull it in. Like so yep. if somebody already created that, it'll automatically do the kerning for you. Yeah, it's there's you could spend days and weeks and months going through all the options in just the font creator. I know when I did, cause I did a class on the font creation in, um, in Pulse, and just going through all the different options took about two hours. And oh, that wow. wasn't even really getting into like, that wasn't digitizing a font. That was just going through the options. That you could the select. options. Yeah. There are so many options in there, but it's, uh, I'm glad that we're doing this. And the reason is, is because, there's just not a lot of exposure for pulse and so um i've heard so many people that bought a tajima got that software but then they couldn't find the education so they end up buying something else like wilcom or something not realizing that they had a really powerful program that they just needed to learn how to use it and like when you compare um just like functionality or different tools it's pretty amazing like you don't realize i mean just how robust of a program that is because it's it does so many different things you know without automation and everything that they've they've had to devote a lot of time into making things just work without having to have a lot of knowledge about what you're doing yeah you know, if that makes sense so well, I'm going to say that puts us on our hour. So that went by pretty quick. We didn't get yes, too far, but um, yeah. $5 hopefully. one hour. Yep. That gives well, us some stuff. At least Matt at. has his design digitized for his work that he needs to do tonight. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to bed right after this. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but if you guys have any further questions for us, you can go ahead and drop those in the discord in the digitizing discussion. Um, you can tag us in there as well. Uh, if you have, uh, suggestions on stuff that you would like us to see us do, you can also throw that in there, um, under the discussion tab. So if you're not in our discord channel, please go and join it. It's embnerd.com forward slash discord. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook under, in our Facebook group, the Inbroken Nerd group. Uh, as well as our Facebook page. If you would like and subscribe our YouTube channel, that'd be great as well, uh, under Embroidery Nerd on YouTube. Um, 
Unless you guys have anything else to say, I'll go ahead and close this out. I think that's it. Yep. All on right. Journey, on a journey to learn Pulse a little bit more. Yep. So we will explore it a little bit more next week, I think. So um, with that, we've got DJ Anderson from Digitizing Masterclass, Matthew Enderly from Patch Phrase, Justin Armenta from JD Digitizing Studios, and I'm Jeff Fuller from Fuller Embroidery Works. We're all here representing Embroidery Nerd. Thank you guys for hanging out with us, and we will catch you guys next time. See ya. Good night.